Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Khmer's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So it has been another long day, but another fun day for spoiler season. Yeah, I probably need another cup of coffee here in a little bit. Anyways, Not a Crown of Dawn started off our day, which I guess is kind of uh, fitting because, you know, Crown of Dawn, uh, the episode came out at dawn. Anyways, it's broken. This card is absolutely broken. Probably the most broken commander of the entire set. And then next up, we got nowhere near as broken of a card, but one that has a lot of potential and one that's going to be very popular, at least in my opinion, it's going to be Ishin to Heavens as one. Yeah, this thing is quite fun. And of course, we also got a brand new awesome mythic sword with Blade of the Oni. And yeah, if you haven't seen any of these episodes, make sure you check them out at some point, but not before you stay tuned to this one, because this one's going to be on Shigeki Jukai Visionary, a green commander that deals with lands? No way! How shocking. Do I sound surprised? No. Okay, anyways, let's jump into it. First off, a big thank you to MTG Goldfish for the translated version of this card. So Shigeki Jukai Visionary is a 1-3, wait for it, legendary enchantment creature Snake Druid, because that's a thing now, that costs 1 in a green. It has, by paying 1 in a green and tapping it, return Shigeki Jukai Visionary to its owner's hand, reveal the top 4 cards of your library. You may put a land card from among them onto the battlefield, tapped in the rest near graveyard. And it has channel XX green green, so you can discard it to return X target non-legendary cards from your graveyard to your hand. So there is a ton going on here, so let's break it down. First up, Shigeki's activated ability, which again costs one and a green, and you tap it to bring it back to your hand. You get to reveal the top four cards of your library, so chances are pretty good that there's going to be a land in there. And if there is, it gets to go straight onto the battlefield. Now it's on the battlefield tap, so you can't use it right away. But still, that can be a great way to ramp with this commander, obviously. On top of that, the rest of those cards go into your graveyard, which works great in tandem with that channel ability. Which again is pay XX, green green, discard it, and return X target non-legendary cards from your graveyard to your hand. Now, why it specifies non-legendary, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I've got, you know, like one, you know, thought, and I'll bring that up here in a bit. But still, essentially, you know, a regrowth type effect. Um, what's that one? Wildest Dreams? This is basically Wildest Dreams, but on, you know, a, a channel ability that costs one more. Essentially, a green more. And actually, another thing to consider with channel is that this is incredibly hard to stop. I mean, again, you're not actually casting it as a spell. You're discarding it as an ability. So unless someone has a stifle effect, they're probably not going to be able to stop this. So there might even be decks out there that specifically run this card just for the actual channeling. Now, obviously, when it comes to this being a commander, well, you can utilize both aspects of the card. Though, again, if you do actually discard it from your hand, unless you've got another way to get it back from your graveyard, you probably want to send it to the command zone and it's going to cost slightly more regardless. So on top of, you know, getting lands into play with that activated ability and getting cards back from your graveyard with the channel ability, one other thing to consider is that this commander can kind of in a way protect itself. That ability is not time restricted. Again, it's not like activate only as a sorcery. So if someone's trying to take out your commander for whatever reason, again, just pay one to green tap and bounce it back to your hand. Now, obviously, if it's summoning sick, that's not going to work for you. And that's actually probably the first thing that you should be considering when building around this commander. But one other thing really quick, and one reason I think that they might have said not legendary specifically, there are a ton of legendary cards in this set. I mean, even some of the lands are legendary, you know, like Besaidu who endures. And yeah, and some of these legendary lands as well also have channel, so you could just, you know, discard this and utilize it to destroy an artifact, enchantment, or non-basic land, and then you get that back with Shigeki, and for whatever reason, 
That might just be too powerful and limited or the standard. I have no idea. I am not an expert in standard or limited. But yeah, I, I am assuming that, you know, Lon Legendary was specified for more of a standard reason. That being said, on a separate note, if you haven't seen my episode on Besage Who Endures, make sure you check this episode out because that thing is an absolute staple. And yeah, this is a pretty ridiculous card. But back to Shigeki and some cards that you might want to consider for a build around it. Like I mentioned, activating right away can be very important with this commander because, again, you're going to be bouncing it back to your hand and then recasting it. If you can activate it right away, well, then you're not going to be wasting time or resources by just saying, well, I guess I've got extra mana, but I've got nothing to do with it, and I can't activate my commander. But with haste, you obviously can. So include something like Lightning Greaves, which is going to help out in multiple ways, giving haste and shroud, and its equip cost costs zero. So why not? Another card to definitely consider is Thousand Year Elixir, an artifact that costs three and it has. You may activate abilities of creatures you control as though those creatures had haste. And you can also pay one to tap to untap target creature, which probably won't come in handy with this commander because you're already going to be tapping it for that ability. But still, you might have other creatures next. Year. We're going to talk about one here in a bit that could work really well in tandem with this. And actually, in green, there really aren't that many ways, you know, specifically to give haste, but even something like Crashing Drawbridge could help. I mean, it's a 0 4 defender that can tap, and creatures you control gain haste until end of turn. So obviously, this can help out your commander, as well as any other creatures that have activated abilities that require them to tap. And other kinds of cards to consider might be ones like Turn Timber Sower, Crawling Sensation, and Crawling Infestation. Turn Timber Sower has whenever one or more land cards are put in your graveyard from anywhere, create a 0-1 green plant creature token. And by paying green, you can sacrifice three creatures to return target land card from your graveyard to your hand. So now when you activate your commander's ability and you get multiple lands off the top, you can benefit even further. So not only are you going to be able to get one land into play tap, but you also can get a plant token. Again, because whenever one or more lands are put in your graveyard, you get a plant token. And of course, by sacrificing some creatures, you can get lands from your graveyard back to your hand to either, you know, hit your land drops or ramp even further with other cards. And of course, Crawling Sensation is very similar. It says, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may mill two cards, and whenever one or more land cards are put in your graveyard from anywhere for the first time each turn, put a 1-1 green insect creature token onto the battlefield. So this helps get even more cards into our graveyard, which again can be great for our commander's channel ability. And again, on top of that, well, again, we just benefit from more lands hitting our graveyard. And speaking of things hitting our graveyard, Crawling Infestation is very similar to Crawling Sensation, which might not surprise you. It says, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may mill two cards. Whenever one or more creature cards are put in your graveyard from anywhere during your turn, create a 1-1 one, one green insect creature token. This ability triggers only once each turn. So now when we use our commander during our turn and we hit a creature that goes into our graveyard, well, we get another insect. Just more ways to benefit from milling ourselves and ways to actually mill ourselves further as well. And of course, like I mentioned before, we also might want to consider cards that get extra lands from our hand into play, again, with things like Turn Timber Sower, but obviously, again, also with our commander's channel ability to get things back from our graveyard into our hand. So a card like Explore can help us out. It says you may play initial land this turn, and we draw a card. Exploration is an incredibly powerful card in Enchantment for a green. This is you may play initial land on each of your turns. So again, with our commander, if we can get back a ton of lands into our hand, we can just keep playing two lands each turn consistently. And then Sakura Tribe Scout says, Tap, you may put a land card from your hand into play. And again, this card works fantastically with something like Thousand Year Elixir. And of course, obviously, if you've got landfall synergies in this deck, well, getting more lands into play with cards like these can obviously benefit that. One other card that I do want to highlight, mostly because it's one of my personal favorites of all time, and, well, it can work pretty well with this commander with the right build. It's an enchantment for green, 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 and it says discard a land card, create a 2-2 green bear creature token. Again, a potential build around this commander might just be, hey, lands here, lands there, lands everywhere. Have a high percentage of lands in the deck to essentially guarantee that you're always going to hit a land off the top four. Not always, but you know, very high percentage chance to do so. And then when you get more and more lands into your graveyard, you know, by milling, you can actually get those lands back out of your graveyard with that channel ability. And then you can utilize things like I use influence to cycle through those lands and just put a ton of bears in play, then channel your commander again. And yeah, that's definitely one kind of a direction that you can take a commander like this. Now, of course, again, outside of Shigeki being your commander, there are definitely commanders out there that might want it in the 99 of their decks, like, you know, Borbrig most enraged. It's a 7 6 Cyclops with Trample that has when it deals combination to a player, you the top three cards of your library, put all land cards of this way in your hand, the rest in your graveyard. On top of that, by discarding a land card, Borborygmos Enraged deals 3 damage to our creature or player. So a deck built around Borborygmos Enraged is likely to have a ton of lands in it, because again, you want to hit lands off the top to get in your hand, and then you're going to be discarding a lot of lands to ping down creatures and players. 
So when you activate Shigeki's ability to bounce it back to your hand, well, you can have a pretty high chance of actually hitting a land to ramp you further. And you can actually get, you know, more lands in your graveyard that you can actually channel, you know, those lands either, you know, from Shigeki or that you discard with Barbarigus and Rage to get them back into your hand to ping down more things. And of course, the lovable Gitrog monster definitely might want to consider Shigeki as well. It's a 6-6 frog horror with death touch that costs 3 black green. It has at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice the Gitrog monster unless you sacrifice a land. You may planish a land on each of your turns, and whenever one or more land cards are put in your graveyard from anywhere, draw a card. So again, the Gitrog monster is bound to have a lot of lands in its deck because again, you want to play additional lands, and you're going to be sacrificing lands. And yeah, with Shigeki, you can activate, get another land into play, and also, if you do hit additional lands, you can, you know, get them in your graveyard, which is going to trigger the Gitrog monster. So on that activation, you can draw a card, get another land into play, and then on top of that, again, when Shigeki is in your hand, it can be very useful as well. Again, by channeling it, you can get a ton of things out of your graveyard, and yeah, maybe you go get some more lands out of your graveyard because you can play additional lands with the Gitrog Monster. Or maybe you go get that combo piece because, yeah, Gitrog Monster. And finally, how about Lord Windgrace, a Planeswalker Commander that has 5 loyalty and costs 2 black, red, green. Specifically, what I want to highlight here is the minus 3 return of the 2 target land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. So yeah, a Lord Windgrace deck is going to have a ton of lands in it and definitely wants to get a lot of lands into its graveyard, and again, Shigeki can help with that. Activate, get it back to your hand, get lands off the top, one goes into play, others go into your graveyard, and yeah, activate Lord Windgrace to ramp even further. But now as this episode is coming to a close, it's time for me to give you my final thoughts on Shigeki Jukai Visionary. Yeah, it's not surprising to see Green have yet another commander that deals with lands, but at least this one deals with them in a different way, and the way that it ramps, well, is pretty unique and, well, a nice change of pace for, you know, commanders that, you know, aren't ramping at absurd rates and just kind of being what we kind of have come to expect with Green. Also, on top of that, I like how the channel ability works with, you know, bouncing this commander back to your hand, and, yeah, that channel ability can be very powerful, being able to essentially... You know, again, wildest dreams for one more mana and get back a ton of non-legendary cards from your graveyard back to your hand. Regardless, though, I'm sure many players out there are excited about this card, and there are going to be plenty more exciting cards that are going to be coming out, so make sure you're staying tuned for more spoiler season coming up soon. Well, I do say soon, but probably not today. I'm probably done with episodes today. I am quite tired, and I need some coffee. But tomorrow, I will be back with even more, so stay tuned for then. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again, and have a good one.